At 6,684 feet above sea level, Mount Mitchell is the tallest mountain east of the Mississippi River and the highest peak of the Appalachian Mountains. It is located in Yancey County, just 19 miles northeast of Asheville. Mount Mitchell is a part of the Black Mountain subrange of the Appalachians, putting it in close proximity with many other tall peaks. The Black Mountains contain six of the ten highest peaks east of the Mississippi, including Mount Mitchell, Mount Craig, Balsam Cone, Mount Gibbs, and Potato Hill. The peak of Mount Mitchell has a very humid continental climate with mild summers and long, moderately cold winters. There are high levels of precipitation throughout the year, with the mountain getting between 5 to 7 inches per month on average. Considering the moderately cold winters and frequent precipitation, heavy snows commonly fall in the winter months, and flurries are possible in the summer. The summit of Mount Mitchell is also very windy. Dense groupings of red spruce and Fraser fir trees top the mountain, though the forest has suffered notable damage. Because of its impact on high altitude areas, acid rain has been a concern for Mount Mitchell's ecosystem in the past, but preventative measures have made it less of an issue in recent years. Now, the biggest threats the trees face are severe weather and an invasive species of small wingless insects called balsam woolly adelgid. Mount Mitchell was originally explored by the many Native American tribes that inhabited the area, most notably the Cherokee. In the late 1700s, the first Europeans began to explore Mount Mitchell. One of them was John Fraser, an English botanist for whom the Fraser fir trees that populate the area are named after. Mount Mitchell itself is named after Elijah Mitchell, a professor who taught at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and who is most well known for being the first person to identify Mount Mitchell as the highest peak east of the Mississippi. Mitchell made several trips out to the Black Mountain Range throughout the 1820s, 30s, and 40s, traveling via a one-horse wagon from Chapel Hill. The tough terrain of the mountain with its steep sides and dense vegetation made it impossible for horses to take Mitchell up, so he had to do it himself, following animal trails and carrying all of his equipment along with them. By 1835, Mitchell had figured out a way to estimate the height of the peak of the mountain using mercurial barometers, which consist of a glass tube filled with pure mercury. The tube is heated and placed upside down in a small cup of mercury. The height of the column of mercury that stays in the tube and doesn't seep down into the cup is then used to determine atmospheric pressure. Establishing a base station at Morganton, Mitchell had an associate take barometric readings there at the same time as he took readings atop the summit of Mount Mitchell. Later, he would utilize mathematical formulas and the barometric data recorded to calculate the mountain's height to be 6,476 feet, which was about 500 feet taller than Grandfather Mountain, the mountain then thought to be the tallest in the state. Mitchell would revisit Mount Mitchell again in 1838 and 1844, adjusting his estimate of the mountain's height to be 6,672 feet, which is 12 feet shorter than the mountain's actual height. At first, Mitchell's measurements weren't entirely accepted. After much debate with the state senator and former student of Mitchell's, he returned to the Black Mountains in 1857. While hiking up the mountain, however, Mitchell slipped off a cliff, was knocked unconscious, and drowned at the base of a waterfall. More than 20 years after Mitchell's death, the U.S. Geological Survey confirmed his measurements and named the mountain in his honor. Mitchell's tomb was placed on the peak of the mountain. In response to the effects of extensive logging on the area, Mount Mitchell was established as the first state park in 1915. In 1964, the NCDOT performed traditional leveling all the way to the top of Mount Mitchell to calculate the mountain's exact height, which turned out to be 6,684 feet. Traditional leveling is a way of measuring geodetic height using an optical leveling device along with a numbered leveling rod. The process involves transferring elevations from a known point to an unknown point via simple addition and subtraction. First. A measurement of the height of the optical leveling instrument is taken using the point of known elevation as well as the leveling rod. In this example, the point of known elevation is 100 meters, and the optical leveling instrument is 2.45 meters off the ground, making its elevation 102.45. Second, the leveling rod is placed at a point with an unknown elevation, meaning the elevation of the optical leveling instrument can be transferred onto the rod as a placeholder. Then, the optical leveling instrument is moved so that another measurement can be taken slightly farther up the slope. In this example, the instrument is zeroed 1.7 meters up the rod, and we already know that 0.6 meters up the rod equals 102.45 meters elevation, so all we have to do is add the difference of 1.7 and 0.6, which is 1.1, to 102.45 to get our updated elevation of 103.55 meters. This process was repeated up the slopes of Mount Mitchell to gradually chart elevations and determine an exact measurement on the mountain's height. In 2009, the North Carolina Geodetic Survey collected GNSS, or Global Navigation Satellite System data, on the commemorative disk in the most recent observation platform on the mountain's peak. 
This elevation is notably a few feet taller than the mountain's official stamped elevation, due to the disc being on a man-made platform higher than Mount Mitchell's natural terrain. Post-processing the position of the disc using OPUS, or Online Positioning User Service, an elevation of 2,039.813 meters was returned, which translates to a little over 6,692 feet. In determining elevation, it is important to take into account something known as a geoid model. The National Geodetic Survey has produced several different geoid models to convert ellipsoidal height taken from the Global Navigation Satellite System to the orthometric height of a certain vertical datum, such as the North American Vertical Datum of 1988, also known as NABD-88. The difference between ellipsoidal and orthometric height has to do with the impact of changing gravity on sea level across the globe. Ellipsoidal height is calculated using the mathematically best Earth-shaped rotational ellipsoid, while orthometric height is calculated from the irregular shape that the surface of the oceans would take when just affected by gravity and rotation, without the effects of winds and tides. This imaginary sea level surface would undulate with differences in gravity across the Earth, as gravity is not constant across large areas. When the location of the commemorative disk atop Mount Mitchell is post-processed with OPUS, the software provides both the ellipsoidal height as well as the orthometric height, which it automatically computes with the best-fitting geoid model. While it isn't necessary to learn how these calculations are done, it is important to understand what each type of height is and to recognize the difference between them, 